It is amazing how one city block in Barcelona can have three incredibly important architectural landmarks, including a masterwork by Gaudí. In a few minutes, we're going to bring you inside on a detailed tour into one of the greatest buildings in the history of architecture, Casa Bacho by Gaudí. And we're going to show them to you in this segment with our guide, Sandra Benzal. We're going to see a couple of important houses. We are going to walk two blocks up because on the left side we will find very interesting buildings of Gaudí by Gaudí. Here in this block we have three houses built by three different architects. There are three homes, three apartments blocks that were refurbished by the three most important architects of the modernism of Barcelona. Luis Domenech y Montaner, Josep Puchicada Falc and Antoni Gaudí. The three were very successful, very special, but at the same time very different to each other. They, they had in common the love for the organic forms, the love for the use of flowers, decorating buildings, the rich ornamentation, the search for the light, the ventilation in the buildings, but had each one its personal touch signature. Okay? For example, this house is built by Luis Domenech y Montaner. And we can tell he loves the flowers. He's always, his buildings full of flowers. And now when, when we walk by, you're going to see that there is ceramic mosaics on the side, like the columns. Normally this house was uh, owned by a family called Yeo y Morera that live in the first floor and then rented the upper apartments to other people. That was the common habit here. It's a block or it's, a, it's an apartments block with four or five stories. The owners live in the first apartment, which is the largest of all and then rent the next apartments to other people. Normally the penthouses were small. Hmm? Often in the beginning these houses didn't have elevators, so it was more convenient to live so low as possible, not to walk steps. The block is called La Manzana de la Discordia, the block in discord. The three are so different, the discord block, they're in discord with each other. No, we're talking about the years 1902, 1904, 1906, in this period, there is the three different years. Puch y Cadafal is the architect of this house in front of us, that although he also uses flowers, the truth is that this architect often is inspired in architecture from the north of Europe, from Netherlands, from Holland, from Belgium. If you look at this roof, I remind you to houses you could see in Amsterdam or in Brussels with that kind of ceiling. They're from the 1600s normally in, in Holland. Eh? But this house is 1902, refurbished by Puch y Falk. The owner was a chocolate maker. But anyway, the tracery eh, of stone, of iron in, in the balconies are, are spectacular. Third house we have in this block is this one on the right, designed by Antoni Gaudi. Antoni Gaudi, refurbished by him. This was refurbished for a family called Batyo. They were textile industrialists. The Batyos live in the first floor and rented the other apartments. Normally the first floor apartment is the biggest and has a big balcony because these families wanted also to be seen. In the early 20th century there was no this traffic, no cars, no scooters, just carriages, trams going by. It was a street where on Sunday after going to mass the society of Barcelona would come for a walk, would could admire these houses, could see the pretty lamps hanging in the, roof, in the ceilings of these homes the paintings on the walls, the furniture. It was a way to show who you were at the moment. Hmm? This house, well, is spectacular. The, the whole facade is covered with a mosaic of glass ceramic. And it's very usual in Gaudi. He loves the mosaics. The roof is all made of ceramic and looks like a dragon. The dragon scales of the skin and its backbone. Because it represents how the hero, St. George, is killing the dragon his sword is sticked on the back of the dragon, and then the curls and bones are the ones of the poor victims of the dragon that has spit out the bones that had eaten the, the flesh. Huh? So instead of just representing a sculpture of St. George, he conceives the whole building related with the story of St. George. So it's spectacular. This house won the prize of the best building in the city in 1906. It's also a World Heritage Site, 
and it's visitable. It's owned by a wealthy family from Barcelona that they, they let visits. It costs about 23 euros to get in, it's not cheap. Well, let's go inside Casa Baccio and immerse ourselves in the experience. Right away, the staircase begins the show. It's an amazing entry into the building and it keeps going up and up through the various levels. There's an air shaft that brings in light and air that's become a work of art. Gaudi has designed everything that you see as we walk in to the main room. This was the main living room for the Batyo family and the window is really the most astonishing feature in the entire house. It fronts right on the street and it's a window like you've never seen before. Especially remember, this was created over a hundred years ago. Nowadays, in our modern era, we've got all kinds of really wacky looking buildings, postmodernism, etc. But this was so innovative in the modernista style or the Art Nouveau style, pioneered by Gaudi in Barcelona. And the style was also happening at the same time, more or less, in Paris and Brussels and other parts of Europe but Gaudi seems to have pushed it to an extreme. You get to go on the back terrace of the house and get a chance to take a few pictures back there and then back inside, there's some narrow staircases and broader staircases. You really wanna navigate around and explore every inch. Here's more of the air shaft that will lead you right up to the roof. Another fun experience, you look at the backbone of the dragon that Gaudi put up on the roof. It's all got the Trincati style, the mosaics of ceramic tiles, broken ceramic tiles that he carefully placed into the cement works there, showing the dragon. You can get your picture taken there if you like. Wandering around, you get some nice views from the rooftop back into these most unusual interior spaces. There's no straight lines inside the house. Hallways are curved, there's elliptical arches for ceilings, there's colorful blue ceramic tiles, and yes, of course, there's a gift shop. The stairwell doubles with the air shaft and light shaft to really be a functional and beautiful part of the building. And there's an elevator also in that modernista style for the staff currently or for handicap usage. Otherwise, you walk when you're inside the building and you do want to walk up and down. You've got to explore every bit of it. And by all means, go inside. It looks spectacular on the outside, of course. Here's the balconies that resemble the skulls bring back to the legend of St. George slaying the dragon. So people gather outside and look up at the building in amazement. And many people don't bother to go inside, but that's a little bit of a mistake. Come on, you've come this far to see Barcelona. You want to see every bit of this amazing house. There's the dragon up on the roof that St. George slayed. Balcony you can get your picture taken at. And again, the window, always coming back to that most amazing window, which is wonderful from the outside, as well as viewing it from the inside. A little tip, you might want to go late in the day when it's less crowded. That way you don't have to wait on a line and you can enjoy the interior a little bit more when there's fewer people in the way. But any time that fits your schedule, go on and go for it because you'll find that it's certainly worthwhile. It's better than just only admiring it from the outside. And the evening, it takes on a special quality too, especially here at twilight. What a building.